Hey everybody, my name is Paul Wilson. Uh, this panel is about uh, animation cells, backgrounds, Duga, Ginga, uh, how they, a little bit their background, how they're made, uh, some of the information that's actually on the cells, on the, uh, the uh, pencils, and then how to take care of them in terms of framing, storage, all that fun stuff. Uh, as far as my history with this kind of thing, I've been collecting them for probably 25, 30 years. I've been a picture framer for 27 years. So I've been dealing with this stuff off and on pretty much the entire time I've been uh, collecting them uh, on a professional basis. Uh, starting off, uh, this animation cells. Uh, basically, they're going to be old. Uh, anything coming out these days, if it's an actual cell, it's going to be unusual if it's an actual production cell because almost everybody switched over to digital if you can. You can still get the, the Guga and the, the Genga and the Duga, which are the, the drawings, these, because they still have to make these, although they switched to digital to a certain extent on these as well. But these still exist in the modern production environment. Cells, not nearly as much. Uh, when they're made, the Pencils on the paper, they're going to be fairly a bit more durable. Huh? They're going to hold up better, they're not going to fade, they're not going to stick to the Hey, other. you're back, you're here. I'm, you're just fucking behind me. Um, the the cells on the other hand, hand are like, much more like a dog at the door. Because yeah. said, hey, I'm here, I didn't even see you sneak in. You know what, you want that? You can get one of these. The cells are much more perishable <laughs> because of the way they're made. Both Seriously, that doesn't mean you can come in, you're stuck in behind me. Both because of the uh, paint can peel off, they can flake, they can stick to other items, to other cells, to pencils, right. and then the lines because of the way they're applied, uh, especially the very old cells, uh, they can fade off. I actually have some examples up here, especially this writing bead set of how uh, the lines are made because of the exposure to the cell. The paint's still fine, but the lines are almost gone. Um, yeah. Well, on the lines on a lot of these, uh, the very, very early ones were done with a uh, heat transfer system. And we could basically put the pencil drawing in with basically almost carbon paper and then the cell. And they were run through a machine and basically where that really, really dark line was, it did a heat transfer onto the back of the cell. So it's already applied the heat. So if you have a cell sitting out in bright light and where it's warm, it'll delaminate and come off. Later on, they switched over to just plain Xeroxing. And again, it's still a heat process. It's just a little bit more stable. But you still can have issues with the lines coming off. Uh, this is a good example here of the difference. These two cells, this is, this is uh, from Riding Bean. This is mid to late 80s, I think it came out. But this is from the same sequence in, in the film uh, during one of the chase scenes. Uh, this one's I've had framed, and I remember I had this up, framed up in it, uh, near a window that actually got not direct sunlight, but fairly bright light. Plus this is regular glass on it. This is one that I've just had sitting uh, in a folder for a long time. If you take a look at between the two, and these were made at the exact same time, they're the same animation sequence. This one, there's almost no lines left. You can see where they were, they're very faint, with a couple of spots of black on top. The little spots, the little dashes you see, is where they came in and retouched because when they did the initial Xerox or transfer, there were some breaks in the line. So they came in and retouched on top with like a Pigma pen or whatever they were using at the time. Those are still there. The actual Xerox lines, they're gone because they basically got fried. This one, because it was sitting in a folder and basically much more controlled environment, not exposed to light and heat, it's not perfect, but it's a lot more there. It's a lot more stable. There's a lot more of the detail there. So that's one of the things you're going to have to worry about when you're when you frame up your stuff to basically one always put UV blocking plexiglass or glass on it, and then also uh, keep it out of keep it out of direct sunlight. Keep it out of like don't put it over a fireplace that you actually use. Uh, halogen lights are bad because they have a lot. They generate a lot of UV light. Typically, they're still going to have a UV filter on it, but they still generate a lot of UV. So. If you're doing like little spotlights, you're doing actual production, you're better off with uh, these days just get LED based stuff. Because that there's very, very little, if any, UV coming out of that, and also it's uh, 
as far as just information on the cells, I'm probably be jumping around back back and forth, but just dealing with the cells themselves. So typically, you're going to see both on the cells and the, uh, the drawings, there's going to be a letter and a number. Letter, there's usually going to be A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Typically, you're always going to have, there's always going to be A's. There'll be a lot of B's. C's are common, but not nearly as much as B's. D's, once you get in D's and lowers, those are very, very rare. What that designates is layer of cells. A is the top layer. B is the next layer, C, D, E, F. So basically, it's going from the top down to the bottom. So... I thought I brought it to multi layer. Layers from the C? Well, it's layers on the actual cell. So uh, a lot of times you see, like, you have a static head and an out flaps. They're going to be on separate levels. So one layer is going to be A, and the next layer is going to be B. Typically, the uh, 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 the top level, because they're going to be popping on and off, you have the face, which is going to be the bottom, and then the parts are moving on top, so they can pop that off and put it on. Top, the A is going to be I in the mouth, and the B will be the static head. And this is one where it's got multiple layers. This is one that I pretty much had in storage, never really opened up. This is actually just a protective layer on this one, actually. They had some touch up painting on the front with a little white puffs around the ship right here. But this would be another example of one where typically. They do all this, and like the ship might be a separate level that's layered on top. So that would be the A level, and then B would be the static, and then the C. Well, it might be like A would be that, B would be the smoke effects, and then C would be the background of the ship. But there'll be multiple stacks. So that's what the A code is, or the, the, the letter code. The number code act behind that is just cell one, cell two, cell three, just basically going down the line of you starting with one, you go to 50 or three or whatever your number of codes are. Now, one obviously is going to be the start. The end of the sequence can be any number, so typically what's going to happen with that, they're going to write end. I know I got it. Come on. Oh, okay, actually, this is the one. But you can see this is A7N up here. And this basically is the last sequence in that or last cell in that sequence. Uh, typically, one and end are going to be key cells. Not always, but a key cell is basically the, the lead animator. You're going to do, do key cell, key cell, key cell, and then in between are basically do the ones in between. Key cells are not necessarily the best cell in the sequence. A lot of times at the very start of the sequence, an A1, is not that basically you might be an interesting, it's not, you might be, there's going to be a lot of poses in a long sequence, where basically you're going to have a much better, there'll be full face, like some better expression on the face, where basically you're coming in, it's going to be like something like this, and they're coming into the pose or whatever, so it's not going to be nearly as nice all the time. So just because it's a key doesn't necessarily mean it's the best cell. A lot of the times key cells will be the best, or a key cell will be the best, but the end or the start of that is. So why are they called key cells? Uh, key cell is basically, it's a lot of times, say you have a sequence that takes 20 cells, and they're doing uh, what is called pose to pose animation, where basically you have, they start out in standing pose, then it comes back to, like, say it's somebody from Kings of Tennis, basically, or he's down, he's ready to get started. So, key cell, start pose, pose where he's coming back to, or like, he's lifted up to take the, throw the ball up, and then, Basically, it's like the very, the very key points in a sequence of motion. So basically, like pose, pose, pose. You're Madonna and you're bogey, you go from pose to pose to pose. So basically, this pose is done by a lead animator, a key animator. He does 
these specific shots are basically, and then the in-betweeners who basically be grunt guys, they go from this to this, basically, you know, how many frames to go between this, this, and they do the intermediate frames. So basically they're just doing What if the in-betweens are going to be harder than the in-betweens? Yes and no. Because they have the It's a skill set in and of itself. You could be a great key pose guy and do in between for practice. <laughs> a really good guy, he should be able to do everything because that way they can set stuff up or be able to tell the in betweeners what is to help them out when they get it or help them or tweak them some along those lines. But it's one of those things where it's just one of the ways of getting it. There's, there's key to, there's pose to pose image, there's, there's straight ahead where basically you start at point A and you just go with it. Just like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and the, but typically that's going to be one person doing the entire sequence. Because there's no things to in between. Uh, but basically with Japanese style production, it's going to be pose to pose animation with key cells and the in-betweeners and then all that other kind of stuff. Now, this is a A1 cell, so this would be a very start of the sequence. This is from Dongayo, if I remember correctly. So I'm pretty old school with all the stuff that I have up here. So again, it's just standard. You see a little bit of fade in here with that light brown. I'm pretty sure this one wasn't done. With, uh, you can do ones with multiple levels of uh, colors, but that's pretty rare. And everything else, you can kind of see some fading here in the tips. This one's in, it's had some fading, but it's in pretty good shape. Backside, you can see how it's like be precise and again it can get sloppier. If you run across cells where the entire back, it's like a color cell, but the entire back is layered in black. That's that shows you that typically that cell is used for something where there was a glow applied, an after effect glow. They put in a normal paint, then they then they cover the whole thing with black to make sure no light will get through, and then the things backlit. So that's how the older stuff you get glow effects. Um, typically with that, there's going to be the prime cell of this, and there's going to be the reverse cell where what is normally transparent, that's filled in with black, and the rest is left open. That's the, uh, the matte cell, so basically that's how they get their effect. They can use the two cells to layer it over to get your, uh, the glow effects put in. For framing these, um, basically all we're always going to use is ask for mats. They can either be four ply rag, which is basically the top of the line is four ply rag mat. Uh, then you can just get regular acid free mats. Um, that, that's the way you can get into colors, or you can get into like, I you like using these uh, what they're called black core mats. Basically, just, instead of being the normal white or off white, it's black. They come in acid free now. Um, so I just like the curse, I just like the way it sets the cells off. But, you always want to use an acid free mat in the front. You always want to have acid free backing behind it. Uh, I like personally like using these plexi box frames. Uh, they're good and bad. They're good because they're very easy to swap stuff in and out. Uh, I have a big enough collection that I'll just usually just every once in a while I get bored and I'll just pop the back off. And then I just can just swap the cells out. So it makes it really, really easy. And these are uh, for animation cells. For ready-made, 11 by 14 is the size to go for. It's easy, it gives you, you can buy ready-made mats or get them made, it's really simple. Uh, but you want NASA free back, you want NASA free mat front, NASA free back in. Now all these, I'm actually just using what's called two-ply, uh, uh, two-ply rag backing. Um, you can use another piece of mat board. Uh, I just use the, the two-ply because it's thinner. Uh, with these things, you don't have a lot of extra space, and you can usually get like one four ply mat in there, and that's it. Uh, I've tried to do two, it sticks up the back, it's not stable. Um, I use photo corners. Uh, on cells, pretty much always gonna use photo corners. And just get, again, basically everything's has to so just get acid free photo corners. You can get that at Michael's in the scrapbooking section, uh, it's pretty easy to find. Uh, and basically, just put the tabs on the four corners, you know, set. Also, makes it easier to swap them out if you want to, because it just pops in, pops out. Yeah, it just pops in and out, no big deal. 
and that way it's easy to swap your collection around uh, if you want to. And then also it's the last so it doesn't hurt the artwork at all. Also with cells, it's harder to use something adhesive-based. Anything that's like pressure-based, like scotch tape, bad, masking tape, bad, duct tape, <coughs> kidding me. <laughs> and trust me, I've seen every can of these. It's not, I mean, I'm so used to dealing with it, I don't worry about it too much. I mean, if you just had popcorn or lasagna or pizza, <laughs> don't start handling yourself, it'll actually work. Um, but I mean, if you've washed your hands, you're not bad about me not smearing all of your time. I mean, if you want to be, if you, like if you have Ghibli cells or Disney cells or something along those lines, yes. it's time to break out the comic books. <laughs> um, but I mean, your typical stuff, I mean, most of the time, these things get handled the hell and gone during the production environment. And they'll wipe them down so there's any fingerprints on it when you're making shots. But for the most part, the acetate itself is fairly durable. I mean, you might smear it off. If you have some mask in your hand, you might actually edge it a little bit, a little bit. But the cells themselves are fairly stable. Uh, you can clean them up uh, with a soft, uh, soft cloth or something, soft tissue, so you don't scratch the acetate. But in and of itself, the cells aren't too bad. It's the the, uh, the genga, the duga, the paper-based stuff that you have to worry more about acidity on your hands, your oils, your hands, because those will mar them. The cells, the cell itself, the acetate, is more stable in the long term. It's the line work and the paint you have to worry about flaking off or getting stuck in something. So, but again, once again, acid-free mat, acid-free backing. So <laughs> well, it's more along the lines of uh, don't, don't fold it, don't bend it, because um, then you can start it to, to, to peel or to crack and it started to come off. They, it, for the most part, the modern stuff, most of the stuff that you're going to want to collect or be able to collect in, in anime cells, the paints have are fairly stable unless the cell was really, really badly handled or was stored really badly. Uh, by the time they're using the production environment, we're talking about from the 80s onwards. The paints were formulated to stick to the acetate really, really well. So unless it was badly mistreated, it's not really going to come off that much. It's, at least on the back side, anything where it's a touch up on the front or the line work itself, that tends to be more of a worry. Or if it was stored like front to back, front to back in a stack mm -hmm. of other cells, because the paint is designed to stick to acetate. <laughs> so if it's a stack of just cells with no no paper in leaving, it's going to stick to the next cell down the stack. So if you have an ADC level, like your face with the moving mouth, a lot of times those eyes are going to be stuck to the front of the cell behind it. <laughs> so if it's dirty, it makes the pain about to clean it, because uh, you might try to peel it up and pop, there goes the paint that was supposed to be stuck. The A cell is actually stuck to the front of the B cell. Not good. Dealing with that, I've heard people use a hair dryers, like holding it over a light bulb, all kinds of stuff. I try to move those, some of them work, some of them haven't worked. It's one of those things, it's your, your own risk. I can't really recommend one method over another. So the light light key might work, but if it's not misaligned and it's the same sequence and they're relatively clean, just leave it. You don't mess with it. Because if you try to peel it off, you might just you might end up only having half an eye that won't line back again. Or the mouth is, it's just not bad. It, 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 generally, you're better off just don't mess with it. Does that ever happen when they're in production? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it does. But then they're in production. You can just go back and either just paint it back in or just make a new cell. Okay. And some of them get yelled at because you just slowed down because they're filming the sequence and hey, you screwed up that cell, we were just going to shoot. But that's something you can just send it back to paint and just fill it in and just do it. That's just more of a time loss than the actual value of this. Um, so, it's just one of those things. Now, the Genga and the Duga, there's... One of these is a Genga, one of these is a Duga. I'm not quite sure which is which. Because um, I've done research on it, and it seems to get fuzzy, and I remember asking Animators a long, some of the Japanese guests a long, long time ago, but it's probably been 15, 20 years since the asked but I honestly forgot. Uh, but the Genga is typically the primary one where everything else works from it. And then the Duga is where the final cell is actually produced from. 
but they go back and actually make notes on stuff. Like this one's got color notations on it. And this is actually corresponds with this cell right here. But color notations and like this is transparent, that's a specific color. This one's just saying it's the same thing if it's not labeled out. And that's just the uh, color coding for that in that frame cell there. So now again this with these um, I guess you can see I'm handling no cotton gloves or anything, but like my hands are relatively clean. This one's bad. Uh, these you're still gonna be able to find uh, for modern productions. It's gonna be harder because <coughs> the traditional routes for people to get these don't exist anymore. Or they're on lockdown quite a bit because <coughs> just because there are no cells, they don't dispose of them the way they used to. You used to be able to go behind production companies in Japan and there would just be crates of cells and drawings in the dumpsters. Because after they produce them, they're, they're trash. Uh, and then they started saving some of the prime stuff, uh, and then they sell them off, or people learn that, yeah, okay, there's some value in this, but for the most part, they were tossed after production. They, they don't, where they got storm, there's not storage space that you can't do stuff. They serve their purpose, they were filmed, okay, I'm out of here, <coughs> make space for the next batch that's coming. Um, now, with paper based stuff, you can still use the photo corners, those work really well. The other thing you can use is linen tape. Uh, again, uh, if you go to Michael's or anything else that has uh, scrapbooking or just uh, anything else like that, uh, use linen tape. There's uh, Hayaku is one specific name for uh, a rice paper based uh, paper t uh, hinging tape. Uh, basically, one thing don't use Mackey tape, don't use Scotch tape, use the acid-free linen tape, rice paper tape. Uh, one company that uh, we actually use for a lot of people is called Lineco, L-I-N-E-C-O. Um, any other ones will work, but they're just one company that a lot of people use that is easily found. Uh, I think Michaels and Hobby, uh, Hobby Lobby and all those, they'll probably have it. Um, and you can just use that. And uh, typically what you do is what's called a T-hinge which is basically you have two pieces of tape. One goes like this, one goes like that. Adhesive, say the palm of my hand is the adhesive. One piece goes, little tab goes against the back of the piece, so it adheres right here. And then the part that sticks up, you use another piece, and the base of that sticks into the back. Typically, you're not gonna go just one piece like that. You can do it, but typically that's also gonna put tape on the face of the artwork. It works physically, but it doesn't really work as well um, uh, visually. And also, it, this, the standard for hinging is to do it on the back side. Uh, linen tape, it's water-based adhesive, so it's removable if you need to. You can just use a Q-tip on the back side, very lightly use it. Um, technically, you should use uh, distilled water if you're going to do it. In the real world, tap water is, for the most part, just fine. Again, if you've got a Ghibli cell or a, or a Ghibli Duga Genga or Disney or something that's actually really, really valuable, use it to soak water. Uh, I'll admit, and it still gets done. It's just like something like this or whatever if it's on big I mean, you can lick it. It's not recommended because saliva does contain digestive acids, so over long term, it's not the best thing. So, I mean, tap water for the most part. Um, don't soak it, because if you get it really, really wet and it attaches to the paper, it'll cause it to buckle. Basically, you're trying to do the absolute minimum necessary to, you know, work to preserve it in the long term, which is why the photo photo are the best. Because basically, you're not doing anything. You're not attaching anything, you're not altering it, you're not getting it wet, it just slips in, slips out, you're not doing any alteration. It goes pretty much for the larger, uh, Backgrounds. As I said, this one's from Armitage. And again, still has a free mat. And again, this is just because uh, I'm using one of these plexi box frames. It's just got a piece of a two ply acid free uh, right behind it. Now, this was done, um, it's watercolor paper that was mounted onto a slightly, actually, no, that's just the paper border on it. Sorry. That's just, typically, these are just watercolor paper that they're doing them on. Um, this one I stuck in the photo corners. This is another one you can do photo corners or you can do the linen tape to hinge it down. And 
uh, these are usually watercolor gouache, and I'll go in and do some detail work. Gouache is basically uh, opaque watercolors. Uh, watercolors themselves are usually transparent, basically watered down, and it's kind of translucent. So you went through. Gouache is always opaque. So uh, they'll do detail work with like the white gouache. And they'll do some pen work on top of the washes and watercolors. But that's typically how the backgrounds are done. Um, Later on, you do get into some, uh, they will, there will be some printed stuff where they use some Xerox and print it on top, but it's still, you still treat it all the same way. It's still acid-free materials, acid-free hinging. I, I like the plexibox frames. They're relatively cheap. They're easy to swap stuff out if you want to. Now, regular, you can use other frames like metal frames, uh, wood frames, it's just a standard like Michaels or whatever. 11 by 14 frame. And same thing pops in, pops out. Um, this one has regular glass on it. Um, that's one of the things, if you're doing ready-made frames and you're not getting something made specifically for you, most of the time ready-made frames is gonna be regular glass or regular plexiglass. Like these are just gonna be regular plexiglass. There's gonna be no UV blocking on it or anything like that. There are sprays you can get, but the percent of UV they block is nearly as much as an actual piece of UV plex or UV glass. And also, it's, you're spraying something on it, it's going to affect how clear it looks. It's not going to get as nice of a look. And if you actually just get the uh, UV. Now, you can go out, like you could just go out and get the ready frames, and then go to a frame shop and say, hey, I just need a piece of UV glass or UV plex to get my That would be one. So instead of getting the whole thing custom made, you can get just the glass or the plexi glass and then just swap it in and out. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head. UV glass isn't going to be too bad, I would guess, for my 14. It would be 10 bucks or under. It shouldn't be that bad. But I'm guessing off the top of my head, I haven't actually priced the individual uh -oh. pieces on that size, so I know it off the top of my head. Um, but for the most part, that's what you have to worry about for, for, um, for, the, and if you're gonna, for putting the UV on it. If you just stay with the stock frame, plexiglass frame, glass frame, just don't put it in direct sunlight or even bright reflected light. You want to keep it somewhere where it's, it pretty much you're only dealing with internal lighting. Uh, so you don't have to worry about the UV or the heat from uh, direct sunlight. For types of cells, man, I'm really jumping all over the place. Um, types of cells, you're basically, there's going to be three main types you're going to run into, there's going to be uh, uh, sera cells, well, basically, you have general term cells, then you have production cells. Uh, pretty much all of these here are production cells. You have Honkin cells, which I don't have. A, a Honkin cell is pretty much, it's a one-off, one-of-a-kind cell uh, that is Typically, it's used for promotional artwork. So basically, ads uh, that you see in New Type or Hobby Japan or for posters or for the uh, cover art or for the DVD or the Blu-ray. Typically, that's going to be what's called a honkin sound. It's basically really, really uber, perfectly on key, really, really nicely done. Everything's done perfectly. There's the miss anything. All the line work is, is pristine. Uh, they're promotional cells. Uh, you can get them, you can find them on eBay, uh, but they're, they're going to charge a premium for them because basically it's not out of sequence, it's, it's, it's the promotional artwork. Uh, so that's a Honkin cell. Then you have a Sarah cell. This is a Sarah cell. These aren't actually used in production, but they're uh, done in, with the same uh, production methodology. It's Xerox on the back, hand painted, uh, and these are sold as promotional. Uh, this is from Tenshi Miho of Mihoshi. Um, but this one's, typically they tend to be a little bit cleaner than production cells, unless the, when they were making it, they actually had a budget. They weren't just like trying to just pump them out as fast as they could. Uh, but typically these, since they're made specifically to be sold as a promotional item, uh, they're usually a little bit cleaner. That's why the AIC down there in the corner. That's one of the ways of identifying it as a, as a Sarah cell. And then there's chroma cells, which are basically printed. Um, if you look at them up close, you can actually see the little half tone dots on it, and it's just printed on acetate, but it's basically a standard. I'm actually not exactly sure if it's 
might be like similar to color Xerox, it might be offset with photography. I'm not exactly sure what the production method is, but basically it's not hand painted, it's just printed onto acetate. And those are typically the kind of cells you're going to Ceros or uh, chroma cells, 10 bucks. I mean, you're just buying the uh, Ceros cells, yeah, they're probably selling for 20, 25 bucks. There's not a lot of value to them. Basically, if you like the image, don't pay a premium for it. There's plenty of them out there. They're not really worth all that much. Production cells and Hawkins cells, those are worth money on. Hawkins, those are the ones you're, you, you're going to tend to spend a lot of money on those. Top money is either going to be a Honkin cell or a Primo Primo, like really, really popular character from a really, really popular uh, uh, show in a really, really Primo pose. Like say, let's see, Bleach, where basically it's this guy, uh, 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 Ichigo, just after he's released his Bankai, so he got a really, really nice shot of like pose. Full front, nice, good expression on his face. Both eyes are open, looking right in the camera, and it could be like like a chest shot. Full body, but it's like a really nice pose. That's going to be the kind of thing for basically it's going to be a lot of value because basically that's the kind of the kind of thing you want. You don't want it where he's like through, like halfway through a motion where basically like because of they're in betweening, like the the face is stretched out, like eyes are closed. It's like kind of really weird. Doesn't make it makes sense as part of a motion. But it doesn't make sense as an individual pose you want to be looking at. It's one of those things where a lot of those don't even show up in, in the collection channels because basically they know most people aren't going to bother with it. So it just gets, it gets thrown out or basically nobody ever presents it. That's one of the things where you can sometimes find them in the bargain bin and find some of the weirder stuff. And they could be funny as all hell if you get your hands on them, but it's one of those things where most people just aren't looking for that. They want the good pose shots or the good action shots. Like this is like a good, sh this is the type of thing, this is the reason why they made a Saracel of this. It's just a good, nice, full frontal, good expression, clean shot. <coughs> or the action shots, like this is the good action shot. I mean, the face is inside, but basically that's the entire scene you're looking at. So that's probably a good example of something where it is a good shot. Or the Pris, the hard suit shot, that's like a good close up shot where it's just a nice, if you like the character, that's a nice post that you would probably pick up. And that pretty much covers most of the stuff that we'll be talking about. I'm going to open up to questions if people have questions about it. So, any questions? Well, the cells that you get, mm -hmm. do they mostly come from the <coughs> company that made the anime, or are they come from somewhere else? Typically, most of the time, you're, it's very rare that you're going to get it from the Especially these days because nobody really does actual ink on or paint on acetate. Everybody switched over to digital. So there are no cells. No. That's uh my that, that that's one of them they were on celluloid. Uh, that's that's something else. Yeah, that well it's same, it's basically the same thing, but that you're getting into very, very early Disney era. Yeah. Or whatever. And that's yeah, it's basically and that was also Along the same line, but it was mainly one of the biggest things was it's it's mainly because the cellular is highly flammable. It's, it's the same reason why old film, like really really old film, stock in the cans. Uh, how many people here saw uh, 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 shoot, uh, *Inglorious Bastards*? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Quentin Tarantino film, but basically when they put that huge stack of, of the old film, the film behind the screen, and they lit it up, that's because the they went up and like that because that was cellular film. Highly flammable, but you put a match to the whole thing's going to go up. But that would basically animate so anything that anybody here is going to collect or you can be able to track down in the original, it's going to be on acetate. It's not going to be on acetate. So that's not really something you have to look at. Uh, where they come from, typically these days, they're going to come from uh, collectors or from basically the various people. But there's probably a couple guys in the dealership room that are something. It's, if you have a, a connection, you can get them direct, but basically you're going to get through the connection. You're not going to get it direct from the company unless they're selling them. Almost nobody does it. Uh, and anybody that's actually producing it, if it's actually if it's modern, hand painted cell from like something that came out in the last two three years, it's going to be a Saracen. Nobody does. Uh, at least in Japan, goes onto on acetate. It's all going direct on the computer, and they're doing that. Computer and computer. Are there like companies that are? 
kind of thing just for selling? Like, yeah. like maybe there's an anime that was like all done on computers. So there is no such thing as a cell for the production, but there's a company that takes and takes a scene and, and makes a cell. It's it's it. not common, but it's still done. Uh, I don't know specifically who does it, but you do see it. A lot of the times it's going to be promotional in a big way, and that's going to be a matter of what level of promotional item. If it's free, it's probably going to be a chrono cell, which means it's printed on the back, it's not going to be any games, and you can get like these on. Uh, the Honkin stuff, uh, the promotional stuff, just be, uh, some of that's done CG, a lot of that is still done traditionally just because of its Japan tradition still holds a great sway there. Uh, and also there is to a certain extent, there is a little bit of a difference in what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So, Honkins still are done, not all the time, but you can still find modern stuff that is Honkins stuff that is, but those, these days, it's extraordinarily rare for those to come out of the open market. Because it's so few and you can't get much production sales. Typically, people very, very close to production chain, if not the producer or the promotion, those get hung on to. Those do not get the wild work. They do very, very expensive. Um, so it's just one of those things. Where you, these days, what you're going to be able to get your hands on if they hit things are going to be the, the game that I'm going to do. And even then, I'm not really sure who I would talk to or who I would recommend to go to for that. It's because it's paper and there's not with those tend to either just get thrown straight out and mulched or they tend to stay in house, or I'm really not sure. I haven't really heard where those are going these days. Is there like a way to distinguish, I mean, beyond, beyond the ones that are printed, but is there a way to distinguish if something is an authentic cell or if it was I mean, like a copy that someone's making to try to make money? <laughs> letter number two. Oh, okay. Typically, if they're, if they're doing a production of it, they're, uh, if, it's a, if it's a serif cell or a commercial cell, they're not going to have One, a lot will tend to have a logo on it. Two, they're, since there's no need for it, they're not going to put the, the letter and the number put on it. Um, if anybody's doing like a lot, they're doing reproduction work and they're selling it on eBay or whatever, and just, you run to that occasionally, but typically they're not going to know about it, they're not going to they're not gonna take it to that extent. Um, you can tell to a certain extent, if you're familiar with it, you can look at the line quality of people who are doing the productions on eBay, like in the US. It's not going to have the same quality. Uh, the line quality is different too. If you have stuff that you know is genuine, look at the lines on it. They're usually not perfectly solid. There's usually a bit of grainy quality to it. A lot of times when people are doing fakes, the line quality tends to be too good. <laughs> so it's just one of those things where you kind of get an idea of what's real and what's not. I can't give specifics because there are people that are really, really good and fake it, and there are animation cells that basically just don't look right, but they're actually correct. Um, the other thing is basically if it's modern, typically there isn't going to be something. Unless it was a promotional item or, or a, a, a hunter or something. But typically it's, yeah, I mean, I would. They do outsource these days to like Korea and some other places, or India. India's fairly rare. A lot of times they're going to Korea. Sometimes there's a few houses in Thailand as well. I don't know if they've switched to CG or not in a lot of those places. So they might still be getting stuff there. That's usually going to be the lower end TV production stuff, but basically they're just trying to get it out as cheap as they can, as quick as they can. And that means it's still by somebody's math, it might still be cheaper to do it on sales, but I can't really specifically say who's doing it. If it's produced in Japan, it's pretty much guaranteed it's going to be done on computer. Other questions? What do you plan to do one yourself? What do you want to do one yourself? If you plan to do one yourself. Or How would you go about doing it? Yeah. Uh, pretty much you're going to want clean artwork, uh, clean line work. Uh, so I actually used to do little keychains like this, you know, back in the day, although I would do watercolors on it to sell. But I have done a couple, I did a couple of uh, little mermaid reprints for my, uh, my boss's daughter back in the day. But that, uh, your best bet is you get one of the uh, production artwork books that has like all like, the character sheets, that kind of thing. 
and basically you just get one that has a really nice clean artwork. Uh, then you get uh, copier acetate or uh, inkjet printer acetate. Um, this clear stuff, run that, just get your art prepped it, and then print it on the clear acetate. Um, and then basically you're going to use, uh, the problem with that is get, you can't go out and buy cell ink still, uh, but for the set you're, you're going to need, you're gonna, probably going to be spending a fair amount of money. But that's going to be your best bet. Other thing is there's some airbrush inks uh, that work, uh, the Create Text line I like a lot, but I, I just like Create Text period, but that would work. But, I mean, if you want it to be ideal, you go out and you buy yourself cell paints, and that's going to be your best bet. You can try to use uh, acrylics, but they're not nearly as flexible as cell paints. They're going to crack, they're going to tend not to stick. Um, there are some additives you can add to it, but it's still like a... Like a you can try using like the fabric uh, additives to go into acrylic paints because they'll make it a little more flexible. But again, it's not designed to stick to acetate. So your best bet is, if you want to do it, sell paint. And then one, it's not as easy to find as it used to be because we don't know who's using it anymore. And then two, it's just you're going to need a lot of colors. Because like, for example, on just this brochure you have, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Like at least a dozen colors. And probably more, I'm probably missing some. I mean, some won't be as bad, like this, uh, this one's like one, two, three, four, five, six or seven colors. But I mean, if you want something, if you're going to the bother of actually making your own, you're going to want to make a nice one where actually has a couple layers of shading, that kind of stuff. And therefore, you're probably going to be running at least at a minimum six to eight colors. And while you can, you can mix cell colors, you're better off buying it for you. A lot of times to hit the color you want, you can't just take color A, add white to it, get lit. Not a little hard, but you're going to need me that's in yellow or some red or Lord knows what. It's so you're better off. And you could try to get primary colors and mixing down, but that's what you're doing. And also with cell colors, they don't mix the same as water colors do with wash through. You're better off just the colors you need to be done. A lot of times I'll have matches with uh, skin tones, fair, skin tones, tan, skin tones, African American, skin tones, Asian. Uh, and then just like red, light red, medium red, dark red. A lot of the times you can just get sets like that, just like you can uh, the Copic markers. They'll have a like, skin tone set, uh, landscape set, earth tone set. They'll have the same thing for uh, some colors. I have no idea what the cost is. I haven't looked at it in years. But uh, you can find it. Just have fun tracking it down, and then I hope you have a decent bank account. <laughs> Uh, uh, 
overshoot, uh, all that fun stuff. Basically, Illusion of Life, Disney Masters, the Nine Eleven, and all that fun stuff. That still stuff applies, and that still stuff. That knowledge still applies even if you're doing CG stuff in a cartoony style, because you still want squash and stretch and anticipation and overshoot in CG. But if you're still doing it, like drawing it out, the exact same skills, just the actual tool you're using to apply to the final result is different. I just wondered because I remember when I was watching that transformation in the CG. Like it looks fairly fine, but there's sometimes the way that it moved, it just looked wrong. Like when the arms came close to the screen, I guess. But when you watched it, what I was watching as an older one, it seemed to be okay. And so I was thinking that that skill set was something different from. Well, it's the other thing you can do is uh, a flash-based animation, or uh, like say uh, stop Park. Mm -hmm. That's all done, like the, only the first, uh, really only parts of the first season, really only the first trailer thing that the train Matt did was actually done with cut-out paper. They haven't made cut-out paper in pretty much the entire world. It's all, I think it's Maya, it's I forget what, but basically it's all CG. But basically it's just flat shapes that they just put in it. But you, these days you can flash, you can basically draw out what you want, or Toon Boom, or Manga Creator, I forget what the, what the, the animated one, the animated one is. But basically you can do a two drawing, basically make a vector, a vector character, and then have it with a skeleton that basically was drag like that. And that could be what they, what they did for that sequence. I don't know, I don't know what the production was. Or it could be whoever did the keyframe animation on it, or did the keys, basically just didn't do it correctly. <laughs> or basically did what they, the, what they worked for them, or what they thought was good, just didn't read for you. And it's just one of those things where I don't know what the production value is. What's a, a good way to know if a cell is like an in-between? I mean, besides the membrane, because you said sometimes they don't have it if, if it's like a... Typically, a lot of times it's not always, but basically start like a one, and then an end are going to be keys. Uh -huh. In between, most of the time, but not always, the number will be circled, and that will designate a key. Um, I don't have any that are circles, so I can't show them to you. But typically, that is one thing. I mean, you can go on. You can actually do some research on. Uh, I, I was actually to, to buff up for this to remind myself of stuff. I was actually doing some stuff. So. There are some. Uh, there are some of them. There's still a lot of them are still fairly dated because it's since you know, getting any new cells, people aren't collecting as much as they used to because it's pretty much the what's available is starting to really shrink. Because like you'll still see, like I see the same guys here as I do see at the expo or whatever. They're, and basically, they only have so many cells they can get. And basically, it's, at this point, it's the, the collecting has gotten kind of incestuous because since nobody else is. So basically, it's the same stuff that's kind of circulating around going between this person or this person or this person. So when somebody sells their collection or, or goes up on eBay or whatever, or they shut down and they start to go, basically, just, they go to the point A to point B. So, but, you're really not getting new stuff to refresh the stocks. It's just kind of all just flowing around. And nothing new is being made. So, and if you have really, really good stuff, you tend to hang on to it until you're dead or you give it away or you need money or something to be with head to hang on to this. So, any other questions? So the the paper ones the mm -hmm. I Game I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, those are still fairly common to find in current production. They they are still created. I don't see modern stuff out there. Um, yeah. I, there's probably a couple a couple of people I could talk to. Uh, Galanzo and Wink like, could probably know where to go. But it's not it's because people the cells aren't making out. It's typically they would come out with the cells because a lot of times they would, just, they would be paired up or basically there would be a stack of the paper along with the stack of the cells and they would all go out at the same time. And typically people wanted the cells because those are the ones that have all the colors on them. Yeah. So it would all be part of that same whatever method of transport to get it out to the wild via the art of little pretty little hands uh, that existed. Nowadays since the cells aren't being made there isn't that route for the paper to come out with itself. So while they're, they still exist, they're still being created, they don't come out into the, into the public area as much. So 
I'm not really sure where uh, I would say to God. I mean, talk to the dealers and say, hey, is my deck here's a modern series? Like, hey, if I wanted to get some drawings from Attack on Titan, do you know who? And that might be something that you like forms or whatever, start asking about. I mean, yeah, for example, Attack on Titan, I have like, no idea where I would be able to get a good one. Like the backgrounds in the modern day anyways, none of them get even done as a concept on paper, they're all done on computer. It depends on whether it's done. Uh, I know a lot of the backgrounds because they're doing they're doing so many like, turns and wild camera moves and whatever, a lot of those are already done in CG, but you're still gonna have a lot of just traditional 2D stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna exist is that those are always a lot more rare. Because I mean remember, like for an entire scene, you're using the same background. There's going to be multiple cells over an entire scene, there's only going to be multiple drawings, there's only going to be one background. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times, like say, with the series, if, the, the, if it's a recurring series where basically it's house-based, you would never uh, say, well, well, I'll go like, say something semi-modern, let's say a silver stone. Uh, when they're in their, uh, their dorm room, they're going to be in that dorm room a lot. And keep, uh, they'll have like a, they might have a morning, a morning painted version, a day painted version, a night painted version. So there might be three versions of the same room. But during the day, they're going to keep using that same background. So that that background might have over the course of the like, 26 episode season might have several hours worth of air time, but it's only one painting. So it's gonna it's gonna plus if it's something that's an active production, they're probably going to keep it in more because it might end up needing it again later. So it's one of those things where there, there are very few of them, and they typically tend to be larger because a lot of times you have to be able to accommodate for motion inside of the scene. So we do it larger, they can just pan across or do some kind of something like that. So it's not a standard size, not very many of them. And then the traditional method for stuff to get out of the wild isn't here anymore. So.